Ready for this? You will not be able to leave the confines of a bath of any type for an entire month. And you will be provided with food and drink that your friends will take turns to deliver. You'll be able to constantly adjust the water temperature whenever you like, so that the water won't get too cold. You're getting excited, and you're confident that you'll earn quite a bundle of cash, equating to several hundred dollars when you last the entire month. It's the bet you made with your friends, only a short time ago, from within your simple fishing village where you were sitting with your friends at a bar. Little did you know that it would lead to this from a simple conversation. You had been discussing the evolution of mankind, and the conversation mainly focused on the potential that humans could have moved towards evolving to water-based mammals, potentially becoming mer-people. The facts are all in evolution, you tried stating to your friends. Your friends weren't convinced, even with your example regarding getting wrinkly fingers from being in the water for too long, an evolutionary trait we humans adapted to ensure we have grip whilst fishing with our hands in water. Of course, your friends don't see how this could relate to the possible evolution towards becoming a mer person. You felt the need to prove them all wrong. As your friends sat around enjoying themselves, moving on from the conversation of aquatic evolution, you thought hard. How can I prove them wrong? Then it came to you. You stood up, finger pointing to the sky, and said, I bet I can stay in a bathtub for an entire month. And here you are now following the arrangements you seem to have doubts about. Knowing about particular human evolution reignites confidence and understanding in you that there have been some instances in human history where people have adapted naturally to live with their sea-based lives. So this feels like a safe bet. For example, the sea nomads in Southeast Asia have been fishing for 1,000 years in their unique way. Diving deep into the water to catch their fish armed with just a spear these sea nomads have adapted to grow larger over the centuries. It allowed more oxygen cells to be pumped through vital organs and more oxygen to be stored for their deep water dives. This understanding gives you confidence as you await the first day of the bet. During the first few hours, you seem fine. In fact, you find it to be easy and joke throughout the first day, bragging how this will be the easiest money you'd win and what you plan to buy with it all. You sleep well through the first night, but little do you know that your skin absorbs the water in the bathtub as you sleep. With each passing hour, more water enters your skin. Between the two layers, water bubbles form, creating visible lumps on the outer layer of your skin. As you awake the following day, you're slightly alarmed to see the transformation of your skin. You look over your hands, they are all white with the skin crumbling away, and your arms are covered with large lumps of liquid. It's not a pretty sight. You hear someone coming into the bathroom, and you try to calm yourself down. It's only the first day, after all. You just need to toughen up. You need to win this bet, not only for the money, but also for argument's sake. Your friend enters the bathroom with a tray of food, and your friend's facial expression soon turns pale as they see the lumps on your arms. Concerned, they ask if you're okay, and surprisingly, you do feel just fine, and respond that you're just a bit itchy. You're pretty curious how there's no pain, given the sight of your arms. Without thinking, you begin to scratch the large bubbles on your arms. You continue to rub your arm to see the skin's reaction. You now have a freeing feeling as your arms are exposed, as though you have removed unnecessary weight. You find yourself with a new layer of scales in place of skin. Your friend requests that the bet must end, given the sudden change to your appearance. You argue that you're okay and that you want to continue. There's just too much at stake and you want to win this bet desperately. As your friend accepts this and leaves, you request an upgrade to a jacuzzi. You're soon upgraded to the jacuzzi and by now, not only do your friends come to visit you, but members of the village visit curiously, as events like this don't stay secret long in such a small, simple village. As days go by, more scales appear in place of your skin, covering your legs, arms, and your lower back. Your skin is still visible throughout most of your body, but the scales are spreading quickly, similar to a rash. It doesn't take long before you get tired of the jacuzzi and your friends are happy to support an upgrade to the village's swimming pool next to the seaside. You're now in the final week of the bet, and by now, the entire village knows about you, the merman. What you find to be incredible, though, is that as the people visit you in the pool, 
There's no fear or judgment. The people are just overjoyed and intrigued at the spectacle of it all. The pool is large, but it isn't heated. A teenager asks you whether you're warm enough, but you don't notice the cold at all and feel pretty comfortable. Your diet has now changed significantly. You prefer primarily fish. Webbing has grown between your fingers and toes, and small slits on both sides of your ribs have opened, forming gills to allow you to breathe underwater. As you continue to evolve, you keep trying to reassure yourself that it's just a little longer, and that winning this bet was all that mattered. You think back to almost a month ago, when you and your friends placed down your bets, thinking of the cash. Oh, several hundred dollars. It'll all be worth it soon. And besides, you could always devolve back to normal. This will only be temporary, surely. The final day of the bet finally arrives. A great party has been arranged to celebrate your victory. The entire village attends the celebration. There's a band and a great feast for all to eat. You enjoy yourself with the villagers, preferring to stay in the pool, of course. Teenagers throw fish to you, and you catch the fish in your mouth, laughing at your own expense. You jump into the air, performing tricks to the villagers who applaud with every trick. As the party goes on, you slowly break away from the celebration, watching on by yourself in your pool. You feel yourself growing tired of the festivities and the attention. You look on as the villagers laugh and party. You think you're somewhat out of place swimming alone within this simple village. You feel a sudden urge to leave, and you no longer care about the celebration. You have no interest in the money from the bet. You're not bothered that you proved everyone wrong. You only feel the desire to be free. You swim to the edge of the pool. It's dark, so no one can see your attempt to escape. As you pull yourself out, the weight of your body out of the water is so heavy, and your legs and arms are so weak that you collapse and have to crawl very slowly towards the beach. Eventually, you make it to the edge of the shallows, and you collapse as you make it to the water out of breath. The small saltwater waves you feel splashing on your face reinvigorate you after your exhausting journey. Once you've gathered enough energy, you begin to swim towards deeper water. And like a fish to water, you swim with ease. The feeling you have now, swimming in the sea, is like you had been in a cage all of your life. Now you're finally free. The exhilarating feeling of the water with unlimited space seems like heaven to you. As you swim further into the sea, you stop suddenly to look back at the village for just a moment. You pause and watch the town that was once all you knew and you listen to the muffled sounds in the distance, reflecting on the life you had within the village. You feel no emotions as you look back, with no regrets or remorse. And then you dive underwater, ready to begin your new life under the sea.